How's it internet? This is Ozark and welcome to today's tutorial on creating paths in Planet Zoo. I'll be looking at how to actually find the paths in the game which uh, can be quite a struggle for new beginners and then from there we're going to take it all the way to the advanced level so that you have everything that you need to create amazing paths for your zoo. So let's get into it. So naturally the first thing we want to do is find where the path settings and menu is so that we can actually start building some paths. Now this might sound rudimentary to some of you who've played Planet Coaster in the past uh, or even played some Planet Zoo but for anyone beginning uh, I'm going to show you this quickly and then I'll jump to the more advanced stuff for the guys who know where the path menu is. Now the reason that the paths are so hard to find or it was for me at least uh, was just the amount of settings in this game which are a ton and uh, the devs don't really do a good job at all of providing any form of tutorial uh, especially in Planet Coaster there is absolutely nothing at least in Planet Zoo there is an intro tutorial but it still doesn't cover how to do paths and how to edit them even how to access the menu so without further ado it is this button over here at the bottom right far right corner is the paths button and next to that is the terrain button these two actually have shortcut keys on your keyboard which is nine and zero uh, 9 is for parts obviously and 0 is for terrain and if you press it again it will close it. Uh, just for interest sake, barrier is 3 on your keyboard, habitat 4, nature 5, facility 6, construction 7, blueprints 8 and obviously 9 we back to parts. So that is where the parts is located. I feel it's a bit hidden for a newcomer to the game but once you know where it is it's actually I guess it's pretty logical. Anyway let's continue on what type of parts there are in the game. Okay guys, so now that we know where uh, paths are located in Planet Zoo, as well as Planet Coaster, let's take a look at the three types of paths we have available to us. The first is uh, the guest path, uh, the second is the queue path, and the third and last is the staff path. Now the guest path is obviously the most important path, as this is the one that's going to be taking our guests around the zoo, showing them all our beautiful animals. The second is um, a very specific path. That's very important in Planet Coaster, but obviously not so much in Planet Zoo, and that is uh, the queue path for rides and coasters. Now, we don't have any coasters here, but we do have some rides, which can be found under facilities and then transport rides. These are uh, little safari transport um, that you can actually see in action. I think it's the fourth or the fifth stage in the campaign, the career mode. You can see it over there. Uh, it takes the, uh, the guests around the little African uh, safari uh, zoo that you have to manage. And then the, the other rides here are a transport monorail, a riverboat, as well as a steam rail and um, this uh, gondola, which is kind of like a cable car, uh, which you can probably use, you know, to take your guests from one elevated area down to another or vice versa. So I just want to show you that these are in the game, although not to the magnitude that they are in Planet Coaster, obviously. But either way, you do have to use um, the queue paths for them so that guests can queue up. And obviously, you know, the game needs to tell the, the guests that, that they're in a specific queue and that's what they're there for um, so that everything works. But in general, if you link this track up and it links right back, the game will usually ask you which side you want the queue path to start. And then it, you can just expand it from there. So don't worry too much about it. it. It kind of does it for you. But just know that it's there. The third and probably uh, most important one in terms of uh, organization of your zoo is the staff path. Now this is obviously as it says only staff are allowed on this path and uh, the guests will respect that. Don't worry you won't have naughty people running on the, the staff path. So as long as you put one of these and kind of make it go to you know say a the, the barrier entrance um, that's kind of what I do and then um, the guests will happily just walk around along here and they won't enter here so they won't go towards the, the, the animal entrance. Now, the main reason to actually use this is for the facilities and the stuff that the guests don't like, which is the utilities, and that's this transformer and the water treatment area. So if I had to put this water treatment area here, and um, I look at this uh, negative impact on guests, you'll see that whoever, whichever guest, guest walked past this, through this red area here, is gonna have that um, negative impact on them, and they're gonna complain a lot. And that's because they're kind of seeing or hearing this generator going and they don't like it at all. You still have to have these in the game, otherwise you're, you don't have electricity and you don't have clean water for your animals. What, what you do with this is you actually just move it along a staff path area, like say over here. Now, 
as you can see, the guests aren't influenced by this path or by this generator because it's too far away. It's out of the radius and um, they're happy while your staff will never complain about it because um, obviously it's part of their job. That's what they get paid to do. So they won't complain, but your guests will be happy and you have the generator or water treatment facility still doing its job. So that's the main reason to use uh, staff paths. Just kind of separate the guests from the facilities. Okay, guys, so before we um, head towards the, the rest of this video, I just want to let you know that you can actually undo anything in, in Planet Zoo uh, by simply pressing this undo button here. And there's the redo button right next to it. Or you could press Control Z or whatever you want to call it, Control Z, uh, depending on which country you're from, by simply pressing that and then also undoing uh, whatever action you took place. The log of, of the undo is, is quite long. I'm guessing about 50 undos that you have available to you. So don't worry if you make a mistake. The game will, you know, really help you out. And you can obviously redo everything if you do want to. So that's just a quick lesson about undoing that it is available. So let's move forward to the next section. So the first thing you can do is click to build a path. And as you can see, you can swing this in any direction that you want. Obviously it caps kind of at a almost 180 degrees and then it starts flipping around trying to find a, a new location. So if you want to limit that to a specific set degrees, you can enable angle snap. Now angle snap, you can obviously set what angle you'd like it at and then the, the road will snap at these certain degrees. I set it at 45 because I kind of like to be able to, to either do a 90 degree bend or a 45 degree bend just to send me off in another direction. But if I want to do a hard right or a hard left, uh, or even a 180, I can do that with uh, 45 degrees. So it's quite versatile. As you can see there, I can even do a full little track uh, to drive my guests insane and send them in a, in a loop for infinity. Um, but uh, yeah, so the angle snap is very useful. It helps you just organize your zoo, keep things in a kind of a, a grid format with, with a bit of a, you know, a curve and a, a natural flow to it. Besides that, or let me say below that, is uh, the length of your of your path. Now, just going to undo all these paths so that we can just see the difference between the path lengths. Okay, so that is one, and then two, two is here, and then three, So, okay, so here's actually, it's, it's quite an annoying feature because look how far the, the snap distance is. I mean, it's it's pretty far. As you can see, when you enter into this kind of uh, hitbox area, it, it, it instantly snaps. So a nice shortcut key to actually use here is uh, control. So left control, and as you can see, as soon as I press it, that, that zone decreases uh, tremendously and it allows me to go much closer, actually, not even be uh, be influenced by the by the road itself and i can create a new road right next to it so obviously if i release control the snap area kicks back in uh, pressing control allows me to go very close to that road so here i'm now going to put a level three road and then a level four road again pressing control and i can put it right next to it and then obviously level five holding down control and pressing again. So as you can see, it kind of increases by, um, I don't know, I don't want to say a, I guess it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a percentage of it. It's, it's kind of, you know, a one fifth or one extra. Um, so one is one fifth of five. So it kind of just, it doesn't double every time, but it, it just increases by that amount. So that's just the, the, the kind of the, the difference in the, in the lengths. So if you want to cover a large area of ground, increase it to five and you can, you know, snap on a few roads very quickly. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, I can cover that pretty quickly. Uh, another key, another shortcut key for increasing road length or path length and uh, decreasing it is actually the plus and minus key on your keyboard. So minus, as you can see, decreases and plus increases. You can see on the bottom right, as it uh, does it in in the menu as well the the other option here is is width which works in exactly the same way um, 
as you can see I can increase the width of a path quite a lot and uh, we'll have a nice fat path. I really do recommend setting your path to as wide as you can because I have had um, instances where the guess kind of the AI, the, path, the pathfinding of the game, it kind of gets sometimes confused when there are too many guests, especially at the entrances and uh, they start colliding with each other and they kind of cause this uh, kind of yarn ball where they just can't find the solution and they just keep walking into each other for infinity and they kind of get stuck there. And I found that when I use wider paths, they actually, that, that doesn't really happen as often. So I recommend wider paths. It will really just help with the flow of your zoo, especially when you when you start reaching a couple of thousand visitors, uh, which is obviously the goal here. Uh, so there are also, there's also a shortcut key for the width, and that is square bracket uh, left and square bracket right. Square bracket left decreases the path width. Uh, sorry, so my MSI Afterburner is actually linked to, to these two shortcut keys, and that's why you'll see it pop up on the left there. Um, but square bracket right um, will actually increase the increase the path and square bracket left decrease it again so that is path length and path width and as well as, well as angle snap so the last option here is uh, a line to grid now this is very much like angle snap uh, except it's going to override angle snap and uh, force you to be at 90 degrees no matter what so you'll see even though i don't have angle snap on um which now generally okay so let's Unselect it so as you can see I can do the the wobbly snake here. I can do whatever I want if I click a line grid now I must click the path that I want to be on Click it again, and now the grid is in place now if I build You can see that um, Square edges are actually being built. I think that's just because I had it on uh, before By default it should probably be off uh, Well, it probably will be off so you'll see something more like this and then obviously you can build a kind of a plaza area here for your guests where you can put uh, you know benches and tables and umbrellas for them to eat or if you have a large area you know maybe a few habitats and you want a large area that they can kind of stand in then this is how you build it this is the only way to build something like this if i had to deselect grid i cannot um, firstly i cannot build square areas um okay so let me just decrease the the size here quickly I cannot um, I cannot create a, a plaza area like that that doesn't have gaps in between no matter what I do I have to be in grid format in order to do that so again simply select grid select it here and then if you want to make a square area just select square and uh, click it one at a time and uh, you will select you'll create a little plaza area uh, for your guests which is fantastic okay so now that we've, we've uh, run through how to change the length as well as the width and add um, a grid for a plaza as well as some square edges let us look at how to lower and raise uh, these paths so that is pretty simple as well so I'm going to deselect the grid here so that we're just back in, in normal editing mode and uh, so if I click the road here, it'll always follow the path or the ground, should I say, uh, the, the default ground of the game. But I can go up two levels and I can also go down two levels. Uh, by default, you cannot go down unless you tick a setting, which we're going to get into in just a bit. But for now, you can either click U on your keyboard twice. Uh, so first, the first level uh, adds a bit of a ramp to it and the second click of U uh, add stairs so that's exactly how it's going to be every single time if you click J you go back down one level back to the ramp and J again back to uh, level level playing field so up one and up another and then we can keep going up and as you can see we can swivel this road or this path in any way we want go down one go down one again we are on even ground again and then we can go up we can swivel this we can go up one again oops and then uh, just continue like this endlessly so that is how you go uh, create kind of walkways in the sky that are very important I use them a lot for my for my zoos I actually always uh, elevate the people just uh, in line with the or the the walkway just in line with the barrier height so that the guests can look down towards the animals and it's really helped me increase the the happiness of my of my zoos or my guests at least and uh, happiness means more money and uh, 
more stuff that you can build. So I, I found that this is a far better result from them. They complain a lot less that they can't see the animals when they above the, the zoo uh, kind of barrier area or the, the height of the zoo walls. And this is exactly how you can do that. Alright guys, so before we get into some advanced settings, I want to quickly show you how you can actually lower paths and, and heighten them using your mouse and you don't have to use the U or the J shortcut on your keyboard. So all you have to do is highlight a path area. So this will be now obviously default straight. And then instead of pressing uh, U like I am now or J to go down, you actually just click left mouse button and you'll see the, the cursor actually changes. Now from there, holding it down, I move the mouse up to increase the height of the path or down to lower it. And then obviously if I let go, then it'll give me that same option. So watch that little road icon. It'll change into an arrow. And then as you can see, moving my mouse up and down, the road height changes. Uh, so that is that is pretty cool. Um, it's much easier than using your left hand, looking down at the keyboard for U and J. So now you can quickly do it on the fly with your mouse. All right, so let's quickly look at how to delete paths in uh, Planet Zoo, and that is pretty simple. All you have to do is actually right click, the path will be deleted. As you can see, delete, delete. I can even delete uh, a random paths anywhere I like, but just right clicking my mouse and the path will be deleted. The other way to delete a path is by clicking this, obviously delete path button, and then left mouse button clicking, uh, or, my, or right mouse, it doesn't matter because now you've kind of enabled both buttons on your mouse to, to be delete buttons. But the, the main feature um, that you want to use this delete button is that with left mouse button, you can actually hold it down and then you can paint, uh, paint delete roads. So you can paint delete a whole massive amount of roads in a very quick time instead of clicking the mouse multiple times. So that is the big difference between this delete button and just right clicking on your mouse uh, to delete a path. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the advanced menu in path editing for Planet Zoo as well as basically Planet Coaster as well. Uh, this is like I said, the clipboard is the basics path editing settings and then the, the little gear wheel will be the more advanced area. So I'm going to actually just, I'm going to run through this list but I'm going to jump ahead to the curved slopes here which um, is, is related to the path height and that's the reason I'm going to jump ahead. So if we do, let's do another texture here, uh, I'm going to disable delete mode all right so increasing the path height I'm, I'm now using my mouse and increasing it like that and then like that uh, let's do another one all right so now you can see that the the path can curve while in this in this increased height and it can obviously do it this way as well we can you know we can curve the path in any direction we want but now say you only want this path to go straight ahead you don't want any curve to happen not even the slightest degree you want you know you want this perfectly straight that's quite easy to do by pressing the z button or the z as you can see as soon as i press it it snaps into straight angle immediately you can also obviously use curved slopes and uh, this will override the z key so even though i'm pressing it now it's absolutely doing nothing uh, no matter where i have the mouse uh, this is overriding it so it will be locked in like this so i suggest leaving this on and then just using your 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 z key to um, lock it in whenever you need to and when you don't you know you can just release the z key and then you can have a curved slope and then you can lock it in um, to a straight angle again okay so now that we've done that let's take a look at the rest of the the little features in this list so the first option is flattened terrain so in order to show you that i'm going to press the terrain button or like i said zero on the keyboard and increase this terrain um, over here just build a little mountain slope here all right so now I'm going to go back to paths and um, so I'm have I have flattened terrain off now so this is what happens when okay so again press control uh, to make a new road close to another road and then once it's locked in you can let go of control so what this is going to do is it's going to follow the contour the kind of contour why is it not working Okay, too uneven. Okay, let's build them. Um, sorry, that's it's not supposed to happen. Okay, so let's do try that again. 
Okay, so there it's kind of having a hard time. I think this, this terrain uh, is just too high, maybe. Let me just try one more time. Okay, yeah, I think it's just too steep for it. Um, so I'm going to build another terrain section here. Let's just make it a little bit lower. Okay, that should be fine. Back to paths. All right, so let's try again. So path. Okay, so as you can see, it follows the, the terrain area um, going over the mountain. So like I said here, don't make it too high. The path doesn't actually like it. I don't know what the degree limit is, um, but I guess the game will tell you whether you can go over or not. So what this setting does, so we can go actually use this mountain that I created here. And um, now with flattened terrain, instead of going over, we're going straight through this thing, um, which is very cool. Now, as you can see, it actually creates a little tunnel for us. So up to a certain height here, whichever height this may be, the height of this, this cliff here, it'll start creating a tunnel. Now, if the terrain were lower, so let's use our, our side here, it will actually just make a, a cut through without a tunnel covering it, um, as you can see here. So now we have a little tunnel covering and we can actually create something cool here. So same as what you would see in um, any, you know, urban traffic. Uh, sorry, let me just turn it off. Okay, let's just go back one. Use my mouse, go up level. Okay, go down, flatten out. Uh, See, now we can have a bridge over a walkway. Pretty nifty, right? And it can, it can connect to that one. So there we've built a nice little walkway system that's interesting for the visitors and just make sure your zoo look cool overall. Um, so I'm just gonna disable that query or undo that rather, and then go back to the terrain. So the cool thing here is even if you, even if you don't have a tunnel and you do actually want one, you can actually just use the terrain and it'll actually, you see, it'll actually paint in a tunnel for you uh, because it'll reach this height. You see, it's kind of like a, a block that it's subtracting out here. So whatever's above this top height is going to automatically start becoming the tunnel. So that's a cool way to make nice looking tunnels, interesting areas for your zoo and your peeps. Um, but we're gonna take it one level further. Uh, so as you can see now, the paths are currently all in line with the, the, the lowest plane, which is our default ground over here. But we can actually go below that with this little setting called tunneling. So if I put a, so as you can see with a level ground, now it creates a kind of a, a moat around our, our path, which is pretty cool because it actually adds a nice little realist, realism to it that the, you know, the guests can't pass. And if you put your, you know, your barriers over here, then uh, it looks pretty cool and uh, it just prevents, you know, not that the guests are ever going to walk there, but it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's something that you might want to add to your zoo. It, it happens in most real life zoos. So that, that's how you create that. Uh, unfortunately, if I, you cannot add water to this, which would be pretty cool. Uh, maybe the devs can actually put that in. Uh, it'd be cool to have a little moat around your, your paths. Um, I think that'll be a pretty cool feature. I'll maybe write to them and ask them to, you know, consider putting that in. But until then, you can't. But that's not the point at what I'm trying to get at here. So now again, with uh, our tunneling turned on, if I now either press uh, J to go downwards or use my mouse, I'm going to start going into the ground and uh, pressing Z to lock the, the, the um, this curved slope down. As you can see, it's not, it's not digging into the ground there for us, kind of like a Minecraft effect. Um, so yeah, you can you know, make your guests go into the middle of Mordor and, and never make them come back, or you can uh, bring the path back and uh, it'll eventually come out the other side and uh, you will be able to connect it again. Uh, just watch out. Okay, and there we go. So there's the path. So now you can take your visitors underneath uh, habitats actually. So you have a whole new uh, kind of a, a spectrum, a level spectrum of your zoo that you can now use for paths and uh, taking people around, you know, going through terrains and uh, it'll kind of, it increases, you know, that, that dimension. So you're not just on one dimension and you're not limited to that space. 
you can have entire kind of ant colonies below your your exhibits uh, so you make you know people pop out at the, at the lion exhibit while you have a buffalo exhibit in the middle here and you don't have to kind of either go over the exhibit or underneath it you can just um or through it you can just make them go underneath and you can also use your terrain now to obviously you know paint on top of this to make it kind of look like a mountain range and uh that's pretty neat so there we go guys that is one of my most my favorite features that i actually wanted to show you i think this is awesome and uh it's something i only recently discovered so i will definitely be upgrading some of my zoos or even taking this to future zoos and uh making my little ant colony of guests all right so the next feature we want to look at is um not as cool but it's a uh, it's something that you know some of you might use and that is path uh, supports so path supports are these pillars keeping it up which in um, you know reality are, are required for any bridge or, or something that's elevated above ground otherwise the path is going to fall flat but this game allows you to actually be unrealistic and if i now paint over this you'll see that the path supports disappear um, so if that's something you want if you you know if you feel that path supports are ugly in your zoo this is how you t you kind of disable them obviously if i create um, a new path here and uh, go upwards the path now will be created without the path supports and again if i turn it on and paint over it they'll come back uh, the same kind of theory applies to let's just use our paths over here um, okay so i'm just gonna i'm going to turn off tunneling now and then i'm going to lower our path back to to even or to sorry to um to uh to a flat uh plane and then i'm going to turn on curve parts okay so now current sorry i'm going to turn it off so as you can see the the curb is this kind of dark brown area around the timber but now if i click this okay let's just use the same material yeah as you can see so as you can see now that there's a curb on this one and no curb on the right hand ones so that's how you turn that off and then the same applies to this um railing on ground path you turn that on now you're able to build railings for your parts. So railings overrides uh, curbs. So if you have railing turned on, obviously you won't see a curb. Even if I turn curbs off, it's still gonna look the same as the one above it. Um, so as soon as you turn railings, uh, then the curbs obviously become irrelevant. And then the two settings in between these two um, is uh, railings on ground queue. So that's obviously pertains to our guest queue for the rides. So here again, if I turn railing off, um, it's going to just erase the, uh, the railing for the guest queues, if that's something that you want. And then railing on elevated, same as the, the um, support posts uh, or the path supports. Uh, so now if I paint over these railings uh, with railing elevated off, uh, so let's just go back into our normal guest, then all these paths are going to be erased and you can create a totally unsafe area um, of a floating path without railings for your guests to enjoy you are basically creating a, a path of doom for them and this can take them into a tunnel and make them never come back or send them into the sky um, where they can ultimately fall to their death that is up to you <laughs> but uh, that is how you do it so those are those four settings uh, in general I basically just leave um, railings on ground uh, sorry railing on ground path uh, off and then railing on elevated so now whenever you build a path and you go up one level it's automatically going to create a railing for you and then when you come down again then the railing is going to disappear so that's up to you if you want to put a railing around your zoo a lot of uh, real life zoos actually have that you know to keep guests in check not that the guests in this game are ever gonna uh, leave the path because they you know they're scripted not to but um if you just want your kind of zoo to look a little bit more realistic you can add railings to to the the floor parts as well um, now one other cool feature here is snap along barriers so barriers are obviously the walls of your habitats so let's quickly make a habitat wall here i'm just gonna go to a where is my zoo entrance there it is over there all right so i'm gonna make a, a wall here a barrier wall okay and then with this I now I'm going to go back into paths by pressing 9 and then so I now have snap along barriers off so if I try and make a path now you can see that I can 
kind of place this path wherever I want. Um, obviously, it's not going to let me go through the barrier, but it's kind of, you know, it's again, it's there's no uh, snap to it. There's nothing to it. And that's exactly what this does. So now, as you can see, watch, watch out my cursor. Now, as soon as it goes close to the barrier, it snaps to it. Think. And then now, as I make this path, even now I'm moving my mouse, um, I can't go basically through the barrier like I could earlier. So now if I turn this off, watch, I can actually go through the barrier. Even though I can't place it, um, I can still go through it. Um, but now with snap along, I'm, I'm stuck and I'm limited to kind of what's more realistic. Uh, so now I can do that. Come around here. And it'll work the same on the other side. It takes a bit of a loop, obviously. Um, but it works at the end of the day. So now you have paths perfectly along whatever barrier you have. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature I liked. You can actually use uh, a line with grid as well. So let's just erase that path quickly using control Z here. All right, so I'm going to make a path again now with snap on, and then I'm going to align to grid and I'm going to make, uh, sorry, I'm going to select the grid first and then square edges. So do this. Okay, see, so now you can have square edges around your, uh, okay, see, I can't go through, but I can go around and I can do, unfortunately, you can't do this, which I'm a little bit bummed about. It'd be cool to have um, uh, your, your edges around it like that, but uh, unfortunately not. So, you can do this and uh, you know obviously anyway the snap just works with in grid mode or it works in obviously you see again unfortunately there's no grid in in the barriers itself uh, so you can't really align the the road perfectly with the barrier so your barrier might be you know a few centimeters too long and then it'll, like I hear like here it's just too, it's just too much on the left and that means that um, this road can't be completed um, which is unfortunate. I wish they would put uh, grids into the, the barriers themselves so that we could perfectly align the roads and the barriers um, without any issues. The other issue is now if I had to build a barrier here, if I had to build a barrier, there's no, you see, there's no angle snap. Um, I don't know. That, well, there is an angle snap, but in, it, it doesn't really work for me because even though it's set at 90 degrees, uh, it's it's not the same as with the roads. The roads, the road angle snap, you, yeah, like I said, there's no grid format. So it doesn't snap to the same grid. Now, obviously, if I place this, it does snap to 90 degrees, but I can angle the initial one to whatever degree I want. There's no, it doesn't follow a grid format like it is in the table. See, I'm kind of, I can do any degree here that I want. Um, so I would like it to snap to that exact grid that we see in the paths. Um, this grid here. So I, I would like the barrier to run along there. Unfortunately, it doesn't. So you have to kind of just eyeball it out and build your barriers like that. All right. So before we get into the last setting of the advanced path menu, which is uh, T junction joining, I'm going to quickly show you how to preview a path before actually laying it down on the ground. So I'm going to make this path over here and then I'm going to come over here. And as you can see, we can see where the path will go. Obviously, that's the, the area in between the two blue kind of uh, curbs. But if we press Z or Z on our keyboard, you can see that we'll actually get a preview of how this path will look and which direction it'll go in. And obviously, if I let go of Z, it disappears. Press it again, it comes back. So now if I lay this path down and let's put it like that, that's exactly how our path is going to look. So it's a nice way to preview the path before actually laying it down. All right, so the last setting we want to do is the joining paths uh, using the T-junction. Now, in order to do that, we create a new path. Again, I press down control so that we avoid the, the kind of snap barrier that happens. And then we press, uh, obviously, the left mouse to create a, a new path. Now, with with T-junctions off, this is what, what's going to happen. So as you can see, I'm joining this, but it's the angle between the top path and the joining path is is not 90 degrees you know it's kind of looks to me if i eyeball it you know 30 degrees on the one side and obviously about 60 on the other side um and if we go okay to the left okay does the bottom one's not exaggerating it at all but the top one as you can see it changes now if we turn t junctions on 
you can see that it's going to try and make a 90 degree turn as the the middle path the joining path joins the top path as well as at the bottom here so it's not it's not as angled as the other one i'll go back to that again um, as you can see this top this top um, part over here is very exaggerated in terms of degree whereas the when t turning it on you can see it becomes more of a 90 degree turn and that's basically what t-junctions does it's nothing too insane but um if you want to keep your, your your kind of roads at a 90 degree angle then that's the function to use and that's basically parts in a nutshell guys i don't think it's terribly difficult i just think that the developers did a poor job at executing any form of tutorial uh, for the game and uh, I really think they could do a better job on this. I was hoping they would learn their lesson from uh, Planet Coaster, but clearly they didn't. They just think everyone kind of knows it because they know where it is. Anyway guys, so I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you can apply this knowledge to your zoo and just make it better or even a new zoo. Uh, build it from the ground up with the new knowledge that you have. Then naturally, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I'll do the best I can to answer them. And also uh, throw some tips my way. If, if you see something I haven't covered in this video, I'm always keen to learn something new. Otherwise, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it two thumbs down. I'll see you guys next time in the next video. This is Ozark. Adios.